check. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to this wonderful worship service that we have been given on this September the 1st, the 15th Sunday in the season of Pentecost. Good morning, my church family. Before we start our service uh, today, we have a couple of announcements and prayer requests. Um, I want everybody to open your bulletin and look at the center portion here, found right here. There are a couple ones that I want to highlight uh, for you today. The church office and the daycare will be closed tomorrow in celebration of Labor Day. So if you need me, email me, call me, text me, but I will not be here. Uh, Grace Place is in need, in need of some items for the uh, food pantry. They are listed there. Um, and we just want to say thank you to Sally and PD for looking out for us uh, for our food pantry. This week, our children and youth groups are starting back up. And so they will resume on Wednesday, the 4th, at 5.30. Um, it's my understanding that food will be provided uh, for lunch. So if you are a uh, children, you will be with Rebecca Lytle Thomas. If you are a youth, uh, which is, I believe, seventh grade and up, seventh grade and up, you will be with Jessica. Uh, she is not here today. She is off. Uh, she is visiting her mother. Um, we need to hold her in our prayers. Uh, so let's keep Jessica in our prayers. Um, but you will be with her. Also this week, our consignment sale is happening. Uh, our sanctuary will transform into kind of a shop for gently used items, um, sponsored by Shadow of His Wings and the James Project. We send a couple missionaries to Guatemala to help spread the word of God and to help an orphanage there. Uh, so that consignment sale helps to fund that trip. So if you have any questions, we have some more information on our volunteer opportunities board here, and Danielle Hensley uh, will be, is available to uh, answer any more questions. And then this coming Saturday, we have our family cookout, uh, which will be happening uh, in the back here. All types of campers, of tents, of RVs, of whatever you want to camp with is uh, going to be happening, and that's going to be starting at 4 o'clock if you want more information, see Rebecca Lytle Thomas. All right, we have a couple more uh, important announcements here, but they, I just am going to encourage you to read them, and if you have any questions, reach out to me. Are there any other prayer requests or announcements we want to lift up for here? Oh, yeah. Here we go. And uh, if you have something you want to lift up, we're going to have to ask you to use the microphone so our... Uh, people who are in our online sanctuary can hear you and can participate uh, with this service. So are there any uh, our more announcements and or prayer requests? We have one right here down front. Go ahead. What's up? Can we pray for my mom's surgery that's happening? Absolutely. We will definitely be in prayer for your mom's surgery. Oh, absolutely. Are there any others that we have today? All right, we, all right, Rebecca, what you got? Um, please pray for Jessica's mom. She's ill. Please pray for David Scott. He's with his dad coming back from Missouri, but he is also um, under the weather today. Hmm. So we will be in prayer for Jessica Knight. Her mother is very ill. Um, so we need to be in prayer for Jessica Knight and for Jessica's mother. And we need to be in prayer for David Thomas Big David and Little David, and they are both traveling back from Missouri, but Little David uh, is under the weather, so we need to be in prayer for Little David. Yeah, Herb, what you got? Uh, there's a bug dive, not this Thursday, but next Thursday, and instead of the Church of God, it's going to be at the library, so... All right, so uh, we have a blood drive here, and uh, that'll be ha happening not this Thursday, but next Thursday. Um, so if you feel called to participate in that, uh, it'll be happening next Thursday at the library. Not at Church of God, at the library. Are there any more prayer requests or announcements this morning? Yeah, Danielle. Yeah. 
You did. What's um, up? So the consignment sale, you might I already oh, said something, yes. but um, on Saturday, I need all hands on deck at um, three o'clock if possible. So if you haven't, if you are going to volunteer um, and you haven't signed up on the sheet, please just put your name down just so I know who's coming at what time. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Danielle is in charge leading our consignment sale and she needs as much help as she can get on Saturday. Um, so please, if you are available to just come lend a hand to help pack that up, please uh, put your name down on the sign up sheet, which is underneath volunteer opportunities, or just see her if you have any other questions. Are there any other prayer requests and or announcements this morning? Hearing and seeing and none, I would ask you now to please center yourselves for a time of worship as Miss Judy McVeigh leads our, starts off our worship service with a prelude. Amen. Amen. We are so thankful for Judy and sharing her wonderful talent with us of playing piano. I, I would invite you now to please stand in body or in spirit for our responsive call to worship this morning. Um, it is going to be inspired from Psalm 51 uh, today, and we're going to do it a little bit uh, different today. When I point at you, I want you to say, Lord Listen to your children praying. Okay, let's give it a try. Lord, listen to your children praying. All right. So, O Lord, have mercy on me according to your steadfast love. Lord, listen to your children pray. Wash us thoroughly from our sin through the body and blood of Jesus Christ. I know our transgressions and our sins are ever before us, but against you and you alone have we sinned. So, Lord, behold, Lord, your children are gathered in your house. Wash us, cleanse us through your body and blood as we gather at the table together. Let us pray. 
Lord, we gather in your temple to be with you, to be with each other, to worship you on this holy day. Lord, as we gaze upon the communion table to be with each other, to be with you, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit empower us to act upon the grace that we have been given today to transform your world, that it may resemble the kingdom of God, your kingdom, that we may bring it here and now, that we may transform this world and all the people who are here, not only in this building, but here on this earth. May we reach people for you and tell them that they are invited, invited to come forward and to taste and see that you are good. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would invite you to remain standing for our opening hymn, which is coming from our hymn book. Uh, it's going to be hymn number 616, Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast. And we will be singing verses 1, 3, and 5. singing our second hymn, which is a hymn we sang last week, hymn number 618, Let Us Break Bread Together. Let us reaffirm our faith using one of the oldest creeds that we have in our Christian tradition, 
by reciting the Apostles' Creed found in your hymn book on 881 or found on the screen behind me. So let us say this together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture of the day comes to us from the oldest account of the gospel, the gospel according to Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 through 23. Listen now for the word of God. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes, who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all of the Jews do not eat unless they are thoroughly washed their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are so also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups and pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honor me with their lips, but with their hearts they are far from me. In vain do they do worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandoned the commandment of God and hold on to human tradition. Then he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of the father and mother must surely die. But if you say that if anyone tells father or mother, whatever support you have, you might have came from me is korban, that is an offering to God, then you are no longer permit to do anything for a father or mother thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed on and that you do many things like this. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand this. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile but the things that come out are what defile. Then he had left the crowd and entered a house. His disciples asked him about this parable. He said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes in to a person from the outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes out into the sewer? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, it is what comes out of a person that defiles, for it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the word of God for the people of God, and all of God's people said, thanks be to God. 
And now we have a time for the young of age or young in spirit with Rebecca Lytle Thomas, our children's director. So if you are young of age or young of spirit, we invite you to come down and spend some time with her. You think Avery's going to have better jokes? Okay. All right. You've got a joke this morning? Okay, hold on. Let's start off with good morning. Good morning. Raise your hand if you're tired. Raise your hand if you're tired? Yeah. No, oh, everybody raise your hand. <laughs> Put your hands down. Raise your hand if you took a shower today. Yeah. Oh, Lordy. Okay. Good job. I'm just picking on you. Okay. So... Danny, you have a joke this morning? Yes. All right, all right, can you say it very clearly for everybody? Yes. All right, let's see. When is a Spanish potato when it's not a Spanish potato? I feel like I know it, but does anybody know this? No, say it. What, Danielle? When it's a French fry? Yes. Okay, there you go. Did you like my accent? I did so good. <laughs> All right, are you ready for this? This is courtesy of Avery this morning. These are some um, biblical jokes. Why didn't Noah do much fishing on the ark? Oh my God, how did you know that? He only had two worms. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> you did so good. That was I didn't so know there were worms in that word. <laughs> Okay, and one more. Sorry, Rick, I'm going one joke over. Why couldn't. Jonah trusts the ocean. I don't know. Not because it wasn't too safe. Does anybody have anything? Because he knew there was something fishy about it. You get that? Mm -hmm. That's all right. That's all right. All right. So. Okay, I thought Avery had better jokes. You think Avery didn't have good jokes? Okay, well, maybe you should bring some next week then. Okay. Okay. So, my beautiful kiddos. Um, I want to just say that this week we started something called like the spirit group. I don't know what it's called. Spirit squad. Spirit squad. Woohoo! And I had a lot of fun doing that. So if anybody wants to join us, please feel free to come and hang out with us. I know that on Mondays and Tuesdays, we've got a lot of soccer going on, right? Natalie plays on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, Scarlett Jordan plays. And let me see. Aubrey Collister and Hannah Zalone. They're from our children's church, and they come to play on those days as well. Then we have Hannah's got some volleyball going on, right? Now, the August 31st one, I sent a text message, but Adeline has my phone. Will, will she be playing in that game probably? Or, okay, never mind. I got that wrong. When is the next thing, Miss uh, Danielle? Not this week, but next week, okay? No home games this week, okay. And then you versus Harrison. Okay, and is that was that with McNabb football? Okay. Okay, so there's going to be a, is it a home game? Okay, so there's going to be a football game Saturday or Thursday. Okay, we'll keep you up to date on that. And then Friday night we have a home game for football for the high school. And man, oh man, I went to that game and. Um, no, not that time, but there was a lot of kids there. We got Jacob Harmon in the band. We got Hoseway in the band, Brody, Christopher, Jason. Um, we've got, tell me if I'm missing somebody, Julie, okay, and Carrie. Um, we've got some people playing the game. We've got Jacob back there. He's our quarterback. What, what else am I missing? Yeah, he's the quarterback. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so we got a lot of fun things, a, a lot of sports going on. And then Avery will start up pretty soon. Okay, now, today we're going to go up here because we're going to listen to Pastor Daniel today. And we're going to color because today is communion. But let's talk about his Bible verse. Um, no, we're not going to the back today. We're going to go up top. So, hold on, listen. Okay, so... Um, Back in Genesis, when God was creating everything, 
um, I heard somebody say this, but when he was creating everything, he spoke to the oceans to create fish. So what, what, was, what was made then? What was made? Fish. fish, okay? And then he spoke to the earth to make trees. And so what was made? Trees, trees. trees. nature, very good, okay? And then he spoke to himself and he created all of us, okay? Now, I have a question. Can a fish survive out of water? No. 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 Can a tree survive not in the soil? No. No, it can't. It, it would end up dying. Okay? So in the same so those are the natural environments for that. And so when God made us, do you think we really survive without God? No. Okay? We don't. We need God to thrive. We need to have him in our soul. Now, are, are any of you perfect? No. No? Okay. Um, we all sin, right? Yeah. Okay. We all sin, but we, our job is to ask for forgiveness when we sin and try not to sin again. Okay? But have you ever met somebody that you may go to school with and they're just, they're a mean kiddo? Okay? They're a, you, so you know that person? Okay? Or they're just a little different from you, right? Okay. So have a question. Do you think they should try to come to church and know God? Okay. I think so, too. All right. You don't know what they're going through. Okay. So you, want to, you always want to be sweet to them, and you want to show them the godly way, don't you? Is there? Okay. So what should you do, Carson? We should, we should ask them to come to church, and we should also what? Pray. We, we want to pray for them, right? Okay. Now, so let's go ahead and pray, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Okay. Let's close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being inside of us. You help us to become who we are meant to be with you in our heart. We can live, we can love, and we can work hard in your name. These kiddos, I'm very proud of that they show good sportsmanship, they show good manners, and they're just good kids. We love them, Lord, and I know you love all of your kids. In your son's holy name, amen. One of our children just said, oh, my back. Really? Oh, your back? How old are you? 24. <laughs> wow. Oh, my back. Wow. Just wait, kid. Just wait. That's all I'm going to say. My church family, we now return. Return to a portion of, God, of our service in which we can return to God a small portion of the many blessings that we have received through the giving of our tithes, offerings, and gifts. If you are joining us in our online sanctuary, there's going to be a QR code that comes up on your screen. If you take the camera out on your phone and point it at that QR code, you'll be able to give uh, to our offering via Venmo online. And that can go for anybody here too. But also, we have several offering plates here in our sanctuary that we invite you to please stand during this part and place your offering in those plates as well. On the corner of your bulletin, there is a perforated section in which you can tear off uh, that piece of paper, fill out the information with uh, your email, with your phone number, if you would like to volunteer for something, or you would like to know more about what we do here at our church, just make that known to us, and we will do our best to reach out to you um, this coming week. So let us return to God a small portion of the many blessings that we have received through the giving of our tithes, offerings, and gifts.
I would ask you now to please stand in body or in spirit for the singing of what's called our doxology. It's a way we praise God for all the blessings we've received. So please stand. Dear gracious God, we give you thanks for this time in which we can return to you some of the many blessings that we have received in our life through the giving of our tithes, offerings, and gifts. Lord, we ask that you bless and break and give these gifts according to your will for this ministry, that we may reach new people for you that we may continue to spread the gospel of love and of grace to all people. Lord, we give you thanks for this time in which we gather into your house to hear your holy word read to us in the scriptures. And as we turn now to the preached word, Lord, I ask that you use my words to feed your people's soul. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Please be seated. So I just want to say thank you all for uh, allowing me to go on vacation this past week. It was a wonderful time in which we headed to my in-laws' house at uh, Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia, um, in Bedford County. And it is a wonderful time that I went fishing and I played some golf, but I also did some time to, to just sit, to just sit and listen, and pray and be silent. It's amazing to me how much noise is around us all the time. Whether it's the radio, whether it's music, whether it's a fan, whether it's the TV, there's just so much noise in our life. And so I used a couple of days in this trip to just be silent and to listen for what God is calling and saying. And I just want to say thank you for allowing me to do that. It was wonderful. And as we turn to our scripture today, we have to keep in mind a couple of things. Where we find ourselves in the gospel according to Mark in chapters 7 and 8 we, have to come, we come to find Jesus and the disciples encountering kind of this weird boundary line. The markers between the Jewish people and the Gentile people. Specifically in our chapter today, chapter 7, we are focusing on the role of Gentiles. That is, everyone who is not of Jewish descent in their and their inclusion with God's kingdom and what that means. Now, I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to tell you one thing that I did while I was in high school. In high school, I was in marching band. I played soccer, and I played golf. Those were my, like, three things, right? And... I played trombone in the marching band. Do we have any like marching band people in here? Do we have any musicians in here? Norm, I know you're one. Well, my, one of the things I absolutely loved about marching band was band camp, okay? Band camp was a time in which my parents got to kick me out of the house and I got to go to the high school and I used to go there all day. And we were in charge of bringing a lunch, and dinner was provided. It was usually pizza, right? Little Caesars, you know. And we started off the week not knowing our music. And by the end of the week, we had to memorize all of our music and all of the motions 
that we were to do. And when I went to marching band, my first year of my freshman year of high school, I walked into the marching band not knowing a single person. Think about that. I was tall, I was lanky, I kind of looked like a trombone, okay? I walked in not knowing a single person. And so what did they do? My band director walked up to me, he took away my trombone, he gave me a pair of cymbals. What? He said, you're no longer playing trombone. You are now playing the cymbals. And I was like, yes! Because the cymbals is the one instrument where you can just make as much noise as you want. Okay? And he said, I'm going to give you these cymbals and your job, but you are now on drum line. What? And so I made my way over to the drum line. And our drum line was pretty huge at the time. It was made up of 22 people on just drum line. And so I, you know, kind of like quietly weaseled my way in, thinking that nobody would notice the cymbal player. Well, the captain of the drum line came up to me. His name was Anthony. Anthony came over to me. He goes, you're the new guy, aren't you? What gave me away? He said, this band director only gives the new people the symbols. I was like, oh. I said, why is that? He goes, because the symbols don't have any parts. Like, oh. He said, also, because your job for the next two days is to not play instruments, it's to get to know people. And I'm going to help you do that. Because here in our marching band, we don't care about what instrument you play. We care about you becoming part of us. You to us. Jesus' mission to the Gentiles, becoming a part of God's kingdom, was all about the Gentiles becoming you to us. Until Jesus, there was this weird boundary line that was there. There was this weird boundary line that only was meant to be for a specific group of people. That this line was to be just that. A line. Who was in, who was out, the door was closed. That there were certain people who could tell the others who they were what their role was, but also, I'm better than you. And to be honest with you, that's what's at the source of our conflict in our passage today, is this weird line, this weird division line, this closed thinking. Starting off our passage today in verses 1 through 4, Mark sets up this scene with some very interesting details of that there were some people, the Pharisees and some scribes, who came down from Jerusalem. Now this is more than a geographic designation. Okay, Mark is not including this so you can just know more about these folks. Okay, Mark is including this because it is to to show the importance of this discussion. They brought in 
the heavy hitters. They brought in the guys who were to know everything, who had all the degrees, who studied theology, who could write, who could preach, who could tell people what they were doing right, what they were doing wrong, what they needed to do. These were the guys. The big guys had come down to check out what Jesus and these rebels were doing. The question that these Pharisees, these scribes, or these learned people asked Jesus may sound like a pretty harmless question on the surface. We all wash our hands before we eat, right? Please raise your hands. All right. I'm a, I just need to do that again. Please raise your hand if you wash your hands before you eat. All my kids up top, do you all do that? Okay, great. Wonderful. Whew. All right. Since we're sharing donuts, I need to know that. All right? On the surface, this question may seem like it was about washing hands. It was about dirt. It was about hygiene, right? Like these people, they didn't have running water, right? So their hands were covered in Lord knows what, Okay? But underneath that, it was about purity. It was about ritual purity. The washing of one's hands for the Pharisees is one of those lines. If you were a good follower, you would wash your hands. You would wash all of these things before you did anything. That was a telltale sign that you were a good believer. That you were doing what you were told to do. But essentially, the Pharisees were calling out Jesus and the disciples by saying, Who do you think you are by doing this? You are not pure. You are not clean. You are not one of us. You are not one of us. Y'all, we are entering into a season in which there is going to be a lot of talk about us and them. There's going to be a lot of talk about those people over there, the others. There's going to be a lot of people wandering around thinking, which one are you? Are you right or am I right? Chances are I'm going to be right and you're going to be wrong. Because when we get to define the boundary markers, guess who's always right? When we get to define who's in and who's out, guess who's always going to be in? We are. This, when I was reading this passage, I always wondered what it would feel like to be out. What would it feel like if I was a Gentile overhearing in these conversations from the Pharisees and Jesus saying, I am not welcome. I am dirty. I am not clean. What do you mean you and I can't share the table together? What do you mean you and I can't be together? What do you mean that I have tattoos in my arm that automatically makes me a sketchy person and you don't want to talk to me? What do you mean just because my hair is undone or I'm wearing construction clothes that you don't want to talk to me, that I'm not valued by you? What does that feel like? Because I have white hair that I am too old to be bothered with. What do you mean I am out? These unclean hands that these disciples were using was just more, was more than telling 
These unclean hands that these disciples were doing was more about boundary breaking than it was boundary making. And these unclean hands were eating the most sacred thing, bread. Hello, communion. Hello, having a meal with somebody. Hello, gathering together. Tearing off a piece and giving it to you. Saying, feed your body, feed your soul. Those were unclean hands. For this passage and for us today, as we celebrate Holy Communion, after studying it for four weeks, this all circles around the power, not of who makes the boundary. It's about the power of what breaks that boundary. It's all about the power of the bread, not us. Jesus, being a good teacher, comes to the aid of his disciples. Okay? These Pharisees are jumping after their, the disciples, calling them out. Well, Jesus defends his disciples by citing Isaiah 29, 13. And Isaiah goes directly towards this prophet as a counterpoint to this boundary line. Because for Jesus, as it stands for us today, coming to the table, sharing the bread, is not about who deserves the bread. It's about the power of the one who gives it. Jesus calls the Pharisees hypocrites. Now we've heard this term before, right? We've heard this term before used in other Gospels in a very, very harmful way. But Jesus calls the Pharisees hypocrites not in a typical way in that they, quote, don't practice what they teach. The word hypocrite is actually used to describe an actor. An actor on stage putting on a show. Jesus is calling these Pharisees, calling them out acting, calling them out saying, you are acting like you know. But you really don't know. And then Jesus goes on to talk about what goes into the body versus what goes out of the body. Sadly, this part of Mark has been used in very harmful ways in modern Christianity. Again, to separate. We all have heard harmful ways that the church in all of its forms has hurt people by saying, you are not holy enough to come and receive. I don't want to be associated with you because we all have heard that. I'm reminded that this passage is calling us to live in a way that matters. And not matters to us, but matters to God. Today, as we go through the service for Holy Communion, we have talked about so much over the last four weeks. We have talked about the invitation. We have talked about confession. We have talked about the power of remembering what Christ did. We have talked about the power of asking God to be active in our lives by pouring out the Holy Spirit. But at the heart of it all, 
is that we are called to use the grace that we have been given here and now to change, to change how we live, how we are. When grace works on us and we listen to it, we can experience our world in a whole new way. So in this upcoming season, when we are talking and we hear about you are in, you are out, I am right, you are wrong, remember, remember the power of what you receive here today and that words matter, our actions matter. Everyone matters. Not because of who we are, but because of who God is. In this very room, as we look around at each other, there are people here. There are people here who we look at and we go, wow, they get it. Or wow, they got it. I want to be like so and so. Or, on the other side of that, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea about this church thing. It's been a long time. I don't know. He's using all these big fancy words. Gosh, he's talking so much. I got better things to do. There's football on. Go dogs. Anyway. But no matter who you are, as soon as you come here, you are invited to this meal to change. So maybe moving forward, and I'm going to end with this, so maybe moving forward, in this next season that's going to be volatile, What would it look like if we were to speak peace? What would it look like if we were to extend a welcoming and inviting place? To those who aren't clean. To those who are different than us. It's when we step out. It's when we step out of those boundary lines. It's when we actually resemble the kingdom of God more than we do when we draw those lines. So my friends, I'm asking you to consider to consider the implication of Jesus welcoming all to the table and what it means for you in your life every day, not just on Sunday morning, not just on Bible study night, not just on youth group night, but on the every day. Are you acting on stage? Are you just going through the motions? Are you just doing the actions that somebody else told you to do? Are you living it? Are you living it? In the name of Jesus Christ, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. My friends, this is the communion table.
Notice I didn't say this is my communion table. Notice I didn't say it is this church's communion table. This table belongs to Jesus Christ and to Jesus Christ alone. We are invited to come and receive. We are now going to transition to our communion part of our service and which does require you to say, to confess. And I hope that over these last four weeks that you have given, gotten a new understanding of these words that you are about to say. The words will be found on the screen behind me. They will be labeled pastor. I will say that. Then there will be lines that say congregation. And then there are going to be a line that says all. So let us go now. And I want you to hear the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and before one another by saying together, Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My siblings in Christ, hear the good news that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love towards us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets who looked for the day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall we learn war anymore. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name by joining their unending hymn, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, to set at liberty those who were oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners, just like me, and just like you. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you, O God, gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery of sin and death, 
and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And at his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, O God, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. Gave thanks to you, O God, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith by saying together, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and of wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your Holy Spirit make us one with each other, one with Christ, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever, and all God's people said, Amen. And so, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer said in whatever language is most comfortable to you. The language that is common in the United Methodist Church is found on the screen behind me. Let us say this together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many, Partake of the one loaf. The bread in which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood. In the United Methodist Church, we practice what is called an open table. We believe that this table belongs to Christ, to Christ alone. This means that no matter who you are, you are invited to come and meet him at this holy meal. 
So come to the table. You who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who depend on this sacrament and for you for whom this is a brand new thing. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come. You all are invited to meet him here. The feast is ready. This morning we will offer communion in two ways. When the usher comes to your aisle, you come forward, you will be asked how you would like to be served. We have pre-sealed elements and we have the bread and the cup. If you choose the pre-sealed elements, they will be given to you. And then we ask that you take them. You can either kneel at our altar or you can return to your seat and consume your sacrament there. If you choose the bread, we ask that you present your hands. You will be given a piece of the bread. In turn, we ask that you take that piece and dip it into the cup, consume your sacrament, Then you can either kneel at our altar for prayer time or go back to your seat. If you are unable to come forward, please let our usher know, and we will bring communion to you because all are welcome at this table. I would ask our musicians to please come forward for something to serve them first. I would ask Julie Harmon uh, and Norbert Allen to please assist me in serving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us through the bread and through the cup. Lord, may we go into the world in the strength of your Holy Spirit that empowers us to break boundaries. To break boundaries that we all may become one in Christ. That we may gather all people to God. May we go forth and give ourselves to others in Jesus' mission to transform the world. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would invite you now to please stand in body and spirit for our closing song, which can be found in your hymn book, um, hymn number 377, or the words will be found on the screen behind me. Uh, we will be singing, It Is Well With My Soul. my hope for you today that you go forth from here knowing, <clears throat> tasting, seeing, 
that God is good and God has given himself in Jesus Christ through the bread and through the cup to empower you to transform this world into no longer a world of us and them, but a world of we. Please bow your head and receive this blessing. Go forth from here knowing that you do not go alone, that you have Jesus Christ in front of you to lead you, Jesus Christ beside you to comfort you, and Jesus Christ behind you to catch you when you fall. Go forth in the name of God, the Father and Creator of Jesus Christ, His Son and Redeemer, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, your Sustainer. Amen. I love you too. I was sewing, and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, what time is it? It was after seven. <laughs>